Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're very excited to have you here. Um, we are doing a wonderful webinar today. I'm Sarah Cooperman. I'm the CEO of SCW Fitness, Water in Motion, and the new program Seat Fitness, which is a really cool chair workout thing. Yay, whatever. Um, and we have a great webinar for you tonight. We're going to be talk about holistic coaching, be mindful of your stress. Mindfulness is a simple yet profound life-changing modality because it empowers individuals with crucial skills in stress management. We're really going to explore how we can help our clients manage stress better and provide a more holistic fitness coaching. In summary, that's what we're going to do. I have great people with us today. We have Kimberly Spring Glick. She has over 25 years of experience teaching and presenting internationally. She served as senior director for Life, Lifetime Fitness for over a decade. And she also was the idea program director of the year um, through her online platform, The Inspired Life, which I know Adam, who's running this webinar and, and trying to herd us cats, he will put that link in there. The Inspired Life is wonderful. And she created the newest SCW certification on life coaching for us. So we're very excited about that. David Dorian Ross, DDR, has introduced more students to Tai Chi than any other teacher in America. I would venture to say almost any other teacher in the world, especially from his amazing online presence. He's been studying Tai Chi since the beginning of time, sorry, DDR, since um, 1979 from some of the top master trainers. He's also a US and world record holder in Tai Chi forms and competitions. And he's the founder and CEO of Tai Chi Fit, the creator of the Tai Chi method, and he's a number one best-selling author. He also um, does the national coordination for the VA's Tai Chi for Veterans program. And and David, I think what I'm going to do is hit you up to share that with people, because during this very emotionally difficult time during this pandemic, and also with what's going on with all the veterans, um, it's a great way also for us instructors, some of us aren't teaching enough, some of us trainers don't have enough clients, and we need financially to support our families. It's a wonderful way to support your family. And one of my favorite discoveries over this pandemic has been Jessica Moyer. Um, she is a marvelous presenter and she's been on webinars with us and she's a wealth of knowledge. She's a heartfelt internet, international speaker, coach and author of Triumph Through the Tears. It's a marvelous book. And as she said herself, she is an open book herself. She has struggled and she shares this very generously. And her passion and purpose are to help women embrace their health mentally, physically, emotionally and spiritually. And it led her to open a boutique wellness studio called the Ice House Wellness and Community. No, it's not a bar <laughs> and it's not a hockey rink. Okay, which is great. Oh, there we go, wonderful. Perfect timing. I, I told my husband, stay out of the hotel room until I'm done. And now the dog is barking. Um, as you guys can tell, I am in a hotel room. I'm in Colorado. Believe it or not, it snowed all day today. Can't believe it, getting ready to ski. So we're gonna start talking about this. If you guys would move your mouse, go to the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see a green share button. To the left of that is a chat box. And what I love about this is we have 111 people registered for this webinar. My guess is we're gonna end up with maybe 30, 35 people showing up and uh, we get a bunch of people watching the recordings, but you guys that show up, we want your questions. We wanna know right now where you're from. Are you a life coach? Are you looking at being a life coach? Please give us your name. Tell us where you're from. Type in the chat box. We love Lori from Charlotte. Thank you for doing that. We've got Shirley from Chicago, We've got people from all over. So do use your chat box. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to start with you, Jessica. How does holistic coaching differ from your average health coaching? Good evening, everyone. So I believe holistic coaching focuses on the whole individual, not just the fitness end, as many 
Many people are going to a coach just to get in, you know, in healthier shape. Whereas in holistic coaching, we're getting to like the root cause of why they're coming, why they need to be there, why they need our help. And so it's that holistic pr approach. I have a, uh, not a certification, a class called MEPS that you can check out at STW, but it addresses the mental, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual components of that, you know, whole person. Yes. And um, how, Kimberly, what's your opinion on this? I, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, most, most of the time, a traditional health coach is similar to a fitness coach where a fitness coach might focus on specifically exercise routines. A health coach may bring in the element of nutrition or other, even some, some mindfulness modalities, but it is focused on um, bringing the physical body into a healthy place. And a holistic coach, it's going to expand beyond the physical. And so much like Jessica said, I, when I coach, I work from six different elements. I work from the, the physical, the emotional, the intellectual. So if we're going to fuel our body, we have to fuel our brain as well. And then the spiritual, the environmental, which we often don't realize we're so affected by. And of course, the social is so important as we've learned over the last year and a half, two years in such a big way. So it's really addressing all the components that not only make up who we are, but make up the experience that we have in this life. And when people are coming to us as more holistic coaches, they're looking to make some kind of shift or change in their life experience. And a lot of that um, is, is far beyond the physical. <laughs> and um, DDR, you're nodding and nodding. And please, you know, share with us. Oops, you're, you're muted. Let's unmute you. Adam. <laughs> um, I was saying, I, I, both Kimberly and Marjorie have hit it right on the head. Um, I would say that all coaches and trainers of all stripes are basically problem solvers. And as they approach the work with their clients, they're trying to figure out how they're going to solve whatever problem the client has brought to them, whether it's a, you know, a, a strength problem, weight loss problem, emotional you know, problem, dissatisfaction with life, stress, et cetera. And in solving those problems, they, they start to ask a series of questions like, you know, what do I do about this? And in fact, most of the health coaches and, and fitness coaches are focused on this. What, what are we going to do? What am I going to you know, bring into the puzzle picture? Whereas a holistic coach is focused on a different question. Typically first, who is the person I'm working with? You know, I can't like everybody's different. So how could I bring the same program to, you know, more than one person? And then the second question, which is really important is why, you know, what's your why? And so that's what I think the biggest difference is. Yeah. I think Jessica also supported you in that GDR. Um, Jessica was talking about the why Simon Sinek and the why people do things. And I also, Jessica, brought up the fact that it makes me a little bit nervous. You know, I'm a lawyer. I get nervous. I, I'm not a, a, a licensed psychotherapist. How do we navigate through that to still deal with the six elements that Kimberly brought up? You know, the mind, the heart, the head, the body. You know, we want to integrate it, but how do we not overstep that line? How do we help without hindering? Yeah, I get the question quite often from women that are coming in asking me how I differ as a life coach to a therapist or mental, you know, to a psychologist or psychiatrist. And I tell them, we're not talking about your past. I'm not here to help you navigate through that. I'm asking you questions to move you into the future. So they have the answers that they lie within themselves. And we're just asking the right questions to help them reach their future goals. Hmm. Interesting. And how did you, how did you come about, um, being a holistic wellness coach, you know, and not diving into the therapeutic aspect of it? How did you, what drew you to be focused on the future? Well, for those that don't know my story, I've had a lot of loss in my life. I lost my son, Stephen to a genetic disease about 20 years ago. Then I lost my dad and I had just gone through so much trauma in such a short period of time. And I made the decision that I couldn't keep living in the past, that I needed to move forward in the future with hope and purpose. 
And so that's really how I determined that I needed to, you know, look for the right tools, the right resources. I attended a John Maxwell training and then I became a Ziegler certified coach because I knew I didn't want to live in my past. That doesn't help us. Um, not to say that we, we need to make amends with our past, but we only have today and hopefully our future. So we need to, to live for that. That's really interesting. I mean, we, ne we have never talked about this, but um, I'm very close with my cousins and my cousin lost her son to drunk driving when he was 21 years old, just horrible loss. And I remember talking to her and she said the exact same thing. She, you know, because I said, you have two other sons and you're, she's a go-getter. She lives a full life. She goes on. It's like, oh my gosh. She just, her kids actually said to her, you need to be around for us. We're still here. And it's yeah, an amazing, exactly. you know, it's amazing. And, and um, what's so impressive is that you do share this with people. Um, how do you go uh, approaching the individuals that come to you um, Kimberly, and how do you coach other instructors to then help others? You know what I think is really important and important for everyone who's on with us tonight. And, and thank you for being here, by the way. And if you have, and for those watching the recording, if you have a desire to move in this direction, one thing I think is really necessary for you to know is you're probably already doing it. You've probably already had conversations that weren't about the class you just taught, that weren't about the workout. Um, you've had conversations that, that kind of started to branch out into the different ele elements of well being. And so we start from there a recognition that you, you actually have a bit of experience in here. You just likely never charged anyone for your time and energy. And so when I work with other instructors to start to move into this area, first and foremost, we talk about what a wellness coach is not, a life coach is not, and that is, of course, a licensed mental health professional who's focused on healing. We are very much more aspirational, and it's in those conversations, to Jessica's point, when we ask the right questions and we listen, we have powerful listening skills, and then we have effective responses, we're able to create a conversation that helps them tap into the answers for themselves. And I've learned over the last four years, Sarah, that pretty much anyone in the fitness industry, if they have a desire to think outside the box a bit, to see things a bit differently and to uplift those who are in their community, those that they feel called to serve, the skills to become a coach are absolutely learnable and it's powerful. And you're absolutely right. You know, the one thing I worry about being an instructor and for everybody and the trainers on this call and the club owners and managers that think about, hmm, maybe I should add a life coaching option at my facility. Yes, it's a great way to make ancillary revenue, but it's a great way to also get your clients more connected to your facility. You know, I, I think about that and we are givers. You know, we stand up there and we just like pour everything out. I mean, you give you give me a microphone, you're going to hear about everything from my day, okay? Because because it may be it may be a 45 minute class, but you're mine. And but we are these givers, and I do I do appreciate that. I do think that we, as a industry, are helpers. And now DDR, you you. It, I don't the capitalize is just the wrong word, but you you captured this idea, right? And you brought the idea of helping veterans, maybe with PS, you know, PSD and things like that, helping veterans through a mindful movement pattern. And it's become very successful. Can you share how you came up with this wonderful brainchild? Well. It was the inevitable outcome of, of my evolution as a teacher, just, and especially, you know, I'm working in a particular niche uh, of, of, you know, for lack of a better word, exercise or, or movement styles, you know, that I do Tai Chi and yoga. And we do also do a seated meditation that is um, very guided imagery. So it's also movement, you know, in, in a certain kind of way. And so, um, it, it dawned on me, it, it, I had a revelation about this, that it was really about the people. Now, I'm a veteran, um, but our whole company, our whole organization is about community service. 
So that's a, the biggest section that we are currently actively working on. There are you know, 20 million veterans in the United States right now. Really tragically, um, uh, 22 commit suicide every single day. Um, uh, hundreds more, thousands more, more likely are addicted to opioids um, for chronic pain and chronic uh, injury that they sustain while an active duty veteran or active duty military person. Um, and we want to do something about it. And what we found is that the, the moving meditation has incredible results. And, you know, I could go on and on about them, but the interesting thing to the topic of our roundtable this evening is that with everything else it does, it also always brings about a decrease in anxiety and an increase in, in good social skills and social feeling. And, and that's wonderful. That's great. Just, I'm going to shift just a little bit is um, Jessica, I think a lot of people on this call are actually interested also, not just in the stress management, but how can I make a career of this? Like you actually opened a facility, you do this. How did you transition from helping one person, helping a few people in my classes to shifting into a, in, into a career? It kind of happened organically, honestly. And I think anyone that's on here, if you're in the, if you're obviously in the fitness industry, you see a need for it because people are struggling mentally, especially emotionally. And if there's a need for it, they're seeking it out. They want someone to guide them, to lift them, to help them live a healthier lifestyle. And so, you know, really find your niche. Um, for me, I realized it was for, it was women, midlife women who had raised their kids, you know, they poured everything into that. And then now it's like them and their husband and there's like nothing left and they don't know where to go and they don't know what their purpose is and they haven't taken care of themselves. So finding that little niche for yourself and starting to donate, you know, I, I donate my time. Uh, I do classes for free. Like David, you know, he found with, with veterans, you have to have that passion and uh, just get out in the community and you'll, you will find that need and you can grow that into your business. And I'm more than happy, you know, if anyone wants to ask questions, you know, off this, I'm more than happy to connect. Oh, that's great. And and Kimberly, how do you guide other instructors into feeling confident and secure as a as a life coach? Can I do this? Do I have the skill set? What are the questions I ask? How do I not overstep, et cetera? How do you do that? Yeah, I think, like I said, I think those are all, you know, skills that are trainable. You know, we we can quickly learn what a, what a coach is and what a coach is not, where the line is and how to have the healthy conversations that can be more aspirational. And so that's a huge part of like the, the life coaching uh, certification I created for SCW. That's a, a big chunk of what we talk about over the course of the day to be able to give them the confidence they need to step into that space. And then I also love to share with those of us in the fitness space as you're moving into more wellness and life coaching that there are so many opportunities out there. And I love Jessica, the approach you, you've taken with having an actual physical space. Um, but we also have this online space that we can um, use as an opportunity to make a bigger impact as well. And we can do it through one-on-one -on -one coaching. We can do it through group coaching. We can do it through creating courses, leading workshops, leading challenges, leading retreats. There are just so many ways that we can impact. And I found that especially for group fitness and yoga instructors who are used to that group dynamic, they tend to be drawn more toward gathering those coaching skills, but then implementing it in something that is more of a group dynamic, like a workshop or a retreat or group coaching of some kind. And so step one, like I said before, is realizing that you already have so many of the skills that are necessary to move you in this direction. Now it's just putting some more tools in that amazing toolbox of yours and you'll be off and running. And um, yeah, I love that. I love that. And because we have it within us, we're already givers. We're already these fools in a bra top with a microphone. Maybe not you, DDR, but you know, Kimberly and I, you know, Jessica on the weekends, you know, it's who we are. Don't um, complain until you've seen it. You know. <laughs> okay. 
you have to tell us about the the VA thing because I was, you know, the government is also behind this. Yeah. Financially supporting and encouraging us as fitness and wellness leaders um, to help these individuals, the veterans, to help them on their quest to get healthier. This is the 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 from a business standpoint the best opportunity in the coaching and fitness and health uh, uh, industries right now because it is a um, a government program. Um, it's a it's actually a, a law passed in 2018 called the Mission Act or the John McCain Bill, and it mandates that among many other modalities, and Tai Chi is only one of them but that veterans can get free classes, but the instructors get paid at the rate of $50 per veteran per class. So I was talking to an instructor today, like, you know, 10 people in a class, that's 500 bucks an hour. Um, or there are many classes where an hour is too much, you know, so it's like a 30 minute class, that's, you know, a thousand bucks an hour. Um, and it is completely compatible with being a life coach or a, you know, a, a wellness coach in that, you know, you can enable yourself to do so much more for the community if your financial foundation is, is well taken care of, you know, uh, there's a lot of mixing that we do with non-veterans in the veterans classes, because that has some great social dynamic, you know, benefits to so you could really take all of these skills that, um, that Marjorie is offering and that Kimberly is offering and, and really mix it in with, um, a, again, it's, I get passionate about it, so I'll get a little tongue-tied because, I, like I said, I'm a veteran as well. Um, when I was in the Navy- I'm I'd just gonna jump in. I, I'm gonna jump in because I think this program is amazing. It's governmentally funded. They've already set the funding aside. And there is nothing wrong with putting food on your table, sending your kids to college, you know, helping, you know, your great aunt because for some reason they're in an apartment that's that's not rent controlled. You know, making a living is not that bad. And I think that that's, and you offer this, we're going to put the link in for, it's Tai, tai Chi Fit, right? Dot net. Yes. And I have a, I have an offer for everybody um, who's here tonight that um, we didn't talk about before, but I just decided I was going to do it. <laughs> As you usually do. Yeah. Okay. So we'll make sure we'll put a link to that in the recording. Like we're going to put a link to Jessica's book and the recording. We'll put a link to Kimberly's uh, training program, the certification in the recording so that you guys, you're all going to get an email that has the links. And what's nice also is if you know fellow instructors that are thinking about this, but watch the, you know, but don't have the time, just forward the recording to them. That's, we do these webinars free every Tuesday and Thursday night. We do them because Jessica, why did you start, you know, donating your time? It's because it feeds your soul. It just, I, it, it's so interesting. All right, I'm gonna share and then I'm gonna shut up. But um, these webinars, I have never once complained over the past 18 months, having to do a webinar every Tuesday and Thursday night. Never once. I know it's confusing to my husband because I complain about everything else. If I can't make one of these, Jeff Howard, who's a very dear friend, steps in, our guest host that we adore. So how do you approach the subject of stress with your clients, Jessica? If you see, you know, I know you also have a degree in personal training. So as you... Um, it's not just a certification, it's a full degree. When you have a client and you can see that there's something else going on besides, oh, you know, how do I, you know, tone this up? How do you approach it? How do you make it happen? The most important thing is knowing your client, getting to know what's going on in their life, knowing that you care. They become really part of your family. You know, in my gym, I know every woman that walks in, I know what's going on in their life. I know what their goals are. And that is so important for client retention and for the, them to go out and tell other friends, this isn't an ordinary space. So you go above and beyond um, as far as like a stressful day, it's talking it out, you know, just putting it out on the table, 
talking about some tools they could use to alleviate the stress. And sometimes stress isn't a bad thing because it does propel us to take action. That's good. That, yeah, that's great. And um, we just got a comment from Vicki. She said, this is wonderful, David. I too am a veteran and I work for the VA. That's wonderful. Um, and that's great. That's great. So how do you approach these clients? If you see a client in need, Kimberly, how do you navigate through that? Well, I think there are a number of conversations you can have, questions you can ask. And, you know, as, as Jessica said, there are tools, there are processes that we can, you know, put in place as a part of our conversation to kind of walk through what's on their mind. And sometimes it's as simple as needing to voice it. Sometimes they have a hard time finding the words to describe what it is. And, and we start with kind of the physical with where you're feeling it and what are the emotions tied to it? Because we're all so much more energetic than we are physical anyway. And, and the fact is though, that that energy then results in thoughts that result in emotions that reflect within our physical. So sometimes if we start there and go backwards, we can get to the root of what's really causing the stress. But then um, like I have a method I use called the positive reframing method. And mm -hmm. it's really about taking a step back from whatever it is that is causing the stress and anxiety and seeing if we can shift the perspective because that's what emotional well-being is really all about. Because our life is not, does not have to be dictated by our circumstances. Our life is, is dictated by our response to those circumstances, like the old saying, right? Life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond. And so when we can take a, a pause, a step back, some deep breaths, and take a look at the situation to see if there's an opportunity for a shift, a slight shift in perspective, ask some good questions around um, whether or not I've got something to learn from this or, 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 or a, way, a different way I could see this where it wouldn't feel so um, stressful, then those conversations have always yielded great results. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. It's just, you know, even you saying that, it, it makes me think, take a breath. Because I always used to think, I don't have time to take, I can't breathe, okay, shut up. I have no time to breathe. I have four kids, I have a husband. I don't know which one is more of a child. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I'm sorry, DDR. It's just, it's just the way women talk. Um, <laughs> um, but I do, I think about that. How do you approach the subject of stress with the veterans that you deal with? Well, first of all, we, we go into the relationship with all of our veterans, assuming, you know, that they all have PTSD. I mean, because the, it does us no good to try to weed out who does and who doesn't. So, and all of them have been through traumatic situations. So we, we just make that assumption and, and we move from there. But our protocol is slightly different. So um, depression and anxiety, shame, guilt, fear, and anger are all things that only affect the adaptive self, AKA the ego, but it does not affect the authentic self. And, and we operate from a point of view that within everybody, there is the authentic self, self still alive. And what we do with our methodology is almost by trickery, if you almost because of our, the way that we facilitate the class, guide people into an authentic experience of themselves. And in that moment, and by the way, it does only last like three seconds and, you know, for a while until you've developed a deeper, um, sense of the moving meditation. But in that three seconds, like all that other shit goes away. Yeah. And that's, and that's it, how we do it. it, it a reconnecting with who they really are, possibly before the experience, you know, and it, and does that help them get through the experience? It's not diving so, in. Go so, ahead, please. So, so the the experience, so this is what we call direct experience. It's very Buddhist. So um, the, there's a whole aspect of Buddhism that says, yeah, yeah, the sutras are fine and all the, you know, this other stuff is chanting is fine. It says, but nothing teaches you what reality is like getting hit in the face, right? So direct experience is transformative. And when we take people into the direct experience of that's who you are, 
not this other thing that is so stressed out and in pain and in anguish, but this other person who's still there, who's joyful, who's creative, who knows what life means to them in that three seconds. And they go, okay, I'm ready to have like 10 seconds in an hour and like my whole life be like that. And that's interesting because Jessica, you talked about living in the now, living, living for your future. And that's almost, I mean, I'm, I'm drawing on here, but DDR, it's kind of like, it's not going back and reliving the experience and, you know, see a therapist for that. And I think Jessica, it was you that brought it up that you will notice the signs and when you need to send somebody to, you know, a, a clinical uh, psychotherapist, but living in the future, trying to get them to reconnect with their authentic self. It's, it's about, it's about now it's about living now. So what are some of the signs, Jessica, that you might see that somebody does need this help? I think it was Kimberly, but I, I would say if they're having suicidal thoughts or tendencies, if they're threatening themselves, if they're threatening others, there have been a few clients that I've, you know, encouraged to go see someone. I also tell my clients right at the get-go, if, if you're, if you say something that I'm worried that you're going to hurt yourself or others, I will call someone for help. I mean, that is our obligation to protect them. Uh, everything else is confidential. Uh, but I, I think the warning signs are severe depression, you know, a noticeable weight gain or weight loss very quickly. The way they're talking or acting um, would be some, some warning signs. Uh, and it's interesting. There's, there's also other signs, you know, like some subtle signs that they just need more community, that maybe a regular student in your group X class or in small group training, or maybe one of your clients is just articulating a little bit of loneliness, a little bit of, I, I had one of my clients was talking about her mom, who she was taking care of in the last stages of cancer. And we just, we would go to dinner after the class. We never really talked about it. We just would go to dinner. We did that for like six months. There was a bunch of us and we would just always do this. And then one day she came up, she goes, Sarah, you, you helped me survive through, it was my friend, Barbara. You helped me survive during a horribly difficult time in my life. My mother just passed away. And it was like, you don't even know, like, you don't even know to ask, but you know you're there for someone and what you can provide them. Um, how effectively do you combine mental and physical coaching for your clients? Like, how do we balance out, okay, you know, you need to do cardio today or you need to strength train or we need to take it a little bit easier and breathe and stretch and possibly have a, a you know, a moving meditation. Um, Kimberly, how do you set that up for your client? You know, it completely depends on the client and, you know, what their inspired goals are, you know, for some there's, there's nothing physical or fitness related that we focus on. And for others, we do a, a combination of both. And, and just a side note for those of you again on here with us, you bring something very unique to the table. The fact that you can move in the direction of coaching both physically and that kind of mental emotional space. To be able to, to, to branch out. So we're talking about not shifting from fitness to wellness coaching or life coaching. We're talking about shifting or expanding from fitness to like wellness and life coaching. So it's just more opportunity. It's widening your lane. Um, and for me, I, what I, I've experienced over and over and over again, and I know some of you may have experienced this as well. If someone has any kind of physical goal, they want to improve their strength, increase their flexibility, lose weight, have more energy, whatever the case may be. That's an external goal. But the number one thing that it always seems to boil down to that serves as the reason for them not thinking the thoughts, taking the actions that will get them to those goals is self-worth. And so we always start there. We always start there because if, if you don't have a strong foundation for your self-worth, then you're not gonna, you're not going to again think the thoughts and, and make the decisions and take the actions that will 
bring you to a healthier place and achieve all of these inspired goals. And so even if the focus that they come to me with is physical, there's always a conversation, two parts. Number one, why? Why is it you want what you want? Like, what's the why? And then I will usually go at least three to five layers deep. So for example, it's, I want to have more energy. Why do you want more energy? Because I want to be able to play with my grandkids. Why do you want to play with your grandkids? Because it would make me happy. Boom. When you can get to that foundational place of joy and happiness, which is what we all want for, with every goal we've ever set for ourselves, it's because we believe that we will be happier in the attainment of that goal. Then we have a, a strong place to start. But even if their goal is physical, we've got to have a conversation about why why maybe they haven't gone down that path already. Why haven't they attained that goal already? And I tell you a hundred out of a hundred times, we can find some nugget of limiting self-belief and a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. So it's easy to have some conversations around how we can make some shifts there. Um, but there's something that's limiting them with regards to how much they value who they are in this world to be able to take the steps to make it a better life experience. That was and, a lot. Sorry. That was a lot, man. But <laughs> but but wonderful. But the the other thing is, you know, they always say like uh, the a therapist is the one that needs the most help, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's all, probably also some people on this call that feel like they need some support. Um, Jessica, I know you do that. I know you do that, Kimberly. I'm not sending anyone to you, DDR. <laughs> I'll, go to right. you. I'll go to you. Yeah, okay. She's got issues. Anyway, but there is, but, but there is, there is, um, you know, the support out there, which is, which is really, really great. Um, how do you get your clients, DDR? You're looking for these um, for veterans to come to your program, what are your, what resources do you do to get those clients to come to your programs? Well, we use every resource just like you would for any other kind of client. I mean, we work with a lot of people who are not veterans too. Like that's only one small part of our school and one small part of the community services that we do. We work with seniors a lot, a, you know, a huge, um, project that we have is supporting seniors who are um, in financial straits. A lot of the senior uh, centers and, and residence um, places around the country have been impacted by by COVID and by the, the decrease in funding and whatever. So, you know, we do a lot of you know, free work with, uh, with those kinds of institutions. And we do daily online free Tai Chi and yoga classes. It's just like, you know, our um, paying forward into the community. It's like that's so, but as far as, as getting from the business angle, we use a lot of social media. You know, here's, here's how I teach about the Tao of business. You basically have to figure out number one, who it is that you want to teach, who it is you want to work with. <laughs> You're gonna love this, Kimberly. Number two, you've got to figure out where those people hang out. So I don't know, is it the library? Is it the Ice House bar? Is it, you know, wherever <laughs> it might be? And then you have to go there, show up and do the Napoleon Dynamite dance. And that is how you get clients. That's because you get you're clients. not gonna get any clients unless somebody notices you. And Jessica, you specifically reach out to women that may be at a point in their life where they're a little, a little lost. They, and, and I know you mentioned about the losing weight. So for you, what's been the most effective way to reach people? Honestly, word of mouth. I mean, the, of course, the power of social media, you, if you do something great, it's on there. And if you do something horrible, it's on there. Um, but really word of mouth, having conversations with women, um, volunteering in my community. I do one a nonprofit event per month. Uh, next month, it's for Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition. Actually, next week. Uh, this month was also for Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition, but we choose a charity every month to bring women together um, to donate profits. What so just, would be, we, I'd love to look at those. Is it, it's on Facebook? You put these things on Facebook? The events? Yes. Yes. 
So usually if it's not for me, like I'll promote it, but usually that organization is promoting it. A lot of mindfulness. I feel like women are afraid of the workouts, but if you have some mindfulness or meditation um, that's become more popular at my, my space is just focusing on more of this. And I feel like that's bringing the women in and then they see other women, you know, achieving the goals. I, I think, you know, my last challenge was called rock your jeans. It wasn't about the scale, but it was about fitting into a pair of jeans comfortably. And uh, it's always successful because it just, women feel better. They feel more confident. Oh, that's great. You know, this is it's pretty funny here. Um, I'm going to quickly share a video and then I'm going to scoop back and have you guys come back and share your closing. So um, here we go. Or not. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yay. I know I'm so excited. It makes me feel so happy. So one quick closing thing. You can't talk long because Adam's got to feed his daughter dinner. So, um, so Kimberly, give us a quick closing. I don't want to leave Vicki hanging. And she asked a question with what okay. I was talking about. She is asking about the motivational interviewing. And so um, motivation and inspiration, motivation, external driver, something that makes you feel impelled to do something inspiration and internal driver. So my goal with the conversations and questions, and the reason my company is called The Inspired Life, is it's about helping people and instructors and professionals help people live their life from the inside out. So it's asking so many questions, so many layers deep that we get to the, the, the deeper inspiration because inspiration lasts a heck of a lot longer than external motivation all day. Boom, okay, DDR. <laughs> so, um... Here's the wonderful thing about people who are part of the SEW family and are here tonight and are going to be at Dallas or whatever, is that you, you already have, as Kimberly was pointing out, but crap. <laughs> I did not point that out. <laughs> He's going to come back. He's going to come back. I think his, his drive is running out of batteries. Um, uh, Jessica. I would say that you are the light for people. They're coming to you to rise out of their darkness. So just remember that, be positive, um, let them know you're there for their journey. And, um, you know, just just keep keep the light around you. And I think people are, will be drawn to you. Yes, yes. And if you fall or you become unplugged, you jump back in, right, DDR? And what's your closing? <laughs> so I was saying that you guys already have the, the most important ingredient. I always say, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I can teach you anything that you ever want to know about Tai Chi or yoga or whatever. I can't teach you how to be a nice person. You guys already show, demonstrate that you're a good person with your heart in the right place. You know, so 
go do get with these people and get your certification and go out and help people. This is wonderful. Thank you guys so much. This has just been one of my favorites. Um, I thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Adam, so much for all you've done and all he's, I can't tell you guys what he's been doing to help us like lift out of this pandemic. So thank you all. Come to a mania. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and have a good night. Namaste, baby. Much love. Bye.